All right, everybody, we are live again, Dynasty Mirror Search for Uhuru. And this evening I have the brother Kala Thanos, Kala Genesis, on with us uh, today. We're discussing uh, the topic, the enemy within, the enemy without, will black America survive? So Kyle, I'm just going to let you go ahead and, and jump right into it. Okay. Hey, what's going on, brother? Uh, 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 you know, uh, yeah, right now we have the enemy within, the enemy without. We have people, uh, like I said, brother Holt always, always so eloquently puts that uh, there is no we. The reason why there is no we because people are fighting against the black America becoming a we. Because once we find out that we become a we, we don't need uh, white America. We don't need these Negro leaders, the black political class. We'll have all these things that we uh, that we need. We don't need the spokes mouths. You know what I'm saying? The Uncle Toms, the uh, 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 the Step and Fetchets. You know what I'm saying? The all the uh, the race explainers, the social justice Negroes. All these people will not be needed if we were had a need a we. You know what I'm saying? So the people that basically like the status quo, like black people suffering, you know, there's people that actually love the struggle. It's a struggle fetish, you know? They can't envision black people doing nothing, anything else but struggling. You tell them, well, there's a, uh, there's a solution to struggle. No, we can't. We got to struggle. There's, there's, there's always this racism, white supremacy. White man is everywhere. Bye bye. No matter where you go, the white man's always there. You know, so in other words, you're telling me, that the white man is so powerful in the universe that the safest place we could do be is in the state of Florida. Or state brother, of Florida. <laughs> brother, it's funny. You said a struggle fetish. Oh, you didn't. Oh, you didn't hear that one. You never heard that one. Oh, yeah, that's a. Uh, never heard that. Oh, you're, oh, yeah. oh, you're, oh, see, you're still new to the. Well, hey, one day we go. Hey, one day we gonna rise up. But until rise then, up. we just gonna struggle. You know, struggle fetish. They got a struggle fetish. Like, I, I let me give you an example. You can tell a struggle fetish too, right? When I do do my shows, right? And we start getting into solutions. I start having some brothers. We said I was the first show because it was it was my show on Block Talk Radio that carried everybody for years. You know what I'm saying? I had Hold Up on, I had Thomas on, I had all these brothers on, and it was my show, my platform. You know, three hours long. They used to carry everybody for years until about 2015 when we got the Block Talk the the uh, the, uh, the um, Black Black African Infrastructure Block Talk Radio, and then we had Minister Daoud had his own show, Thirteen Revolution. But other than that, for the most part, it was my show, it was Minister Daoud's show. You know, what I'm saying the bottom line is there's certain things that came up uh, uh, over the show. We had our own jargon, our own names, and stuff like that. You hear now, you know, neo Negroism, uh, the struggle fetish is one of them. You know, what I'm saying uh, uh, Captain American Negro. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Militant integrationists. All these things came about from the Colonization Radio Show and the Holocaust on Haven and all these shows that we used to do all the time. Yeah, the struggle fetish. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't talking about, yeah, how we getting our ass whooped and everything every 24 hours a day, they don't want to listen to you. You know? I say, look, man, this, you're showing an impressive enough, Colin. You're talking too much sense. You're talking ideas. We can't listen to you. We got to go over to this next show. Oh, whoa, was me. Whoa, with me. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to kill some crackers. I'm going to kill some crackers. You got to kill some crackers. That's what uh, King Samir was on. You know, King Samir. You know, fuck you. And you know what kills me is this. Uh, my show used to have, on Block Talk Radio, used to have the phone lines and the switchboards lit. I mean, you couldn't get on my show. You know what I'm saying? That's how, that's how busy it was, right? Chat room was full, humming all night. And I used to take, if you don't believe me, go to my blog, www.callnation.blogspot.com. Uh, do some uh, archive shirts because I used to take all my chat room, right, and post them as a blog on my blog site, you know, so people look to see how, how long these things were, you know, the conversations going for, the threads going for forever. Anyway, uh, uh, what happened was um, you would go to uh, the New Black Panther radio show and there's like two people in there. You, it's one brother in the Nation of Islam, man. I felt so bad for him. He, all, cause it, all, he, he would have nobody listen to the show. And I said, wait a minute, Nick Schwizlong got like all these members and everything. He can't, this guy can't even keep attention. He's like, yeah, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said this. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said this. And it was so dry. And then one time the dude actually veered off and said something out of his own mind, right? And one brother kept, you, 
you, you just went off the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, man. I'll wait till the minister such as hear about this. And well, yeah, I, I, I'm apologize. I'm like, you, you should have said it like this. You veered off the teaching. And then, you know, and then, then and one thing I want to get back to before I get to the show was I'll listen to some of my old podcasts. I made my first podcast in 2007, right? I was on uh, Pottermatic, right? Please don't go Google these things, man, because that sounds horrible. You know, back in the days, you know what I'm saying? I was like 2007. I was uh, re- I did some podcasts and everything. And I sounded, okay, okay. <laughs> I was, when I first got on, let me admit right now, when I first got on, I listened to one the other night, right? I was a nation with a nation dude, right? Because I did not know, because I, I when I first came on, I did not know that there was anybody out there who thought about an independent nation in Africa or from Black. I thought I was the only one who thought like that, you know? So I came on and said, yes, you know, we got to do the nation within the nation thing. And I said, I want to compete on the lines of uh, the nation of Islam and all these other nation with nation, build our community, nation with nation. So I looked back at the show and I was like, damn, I did speak like that. I did say nation of the nation when I first came on. You know, it was because I thought that's what we did. And then as, as time went on, I met uh, my brother, African Warlord X, and all these other people who's a doctor and a scientist and everything. And I started talking to him about my years. Brother, brother, did you say African Warlord X? Oh, you got to have him on the show, man. You got to have Warlord on the show. I'll bring him on. I'll bring him on. Oh, you got to have Warlord on the show. But he's the type, man. I don't know what, his, what Warlord's thing is, man. He's like, oh, yeah, just that new thing. He'll come on. You know, it's like if, if I stroke his ego long enough, Warlord will come on, you know. Warlord was the one that brought us, like, all, I mean, he was the one that really responsible for a lot of us being here right now. Anyway, that was my boy. That was my boy. He used to call me. He said, yo, Colin, and we was the only one talking any sort of knowledge on the internet, right? And he said, Colin, man, you are one controversial Negro. You know, he used to call me the controversial, most controversial Negro of the century. You know, anyway. So uh, I, I, I started with this whole thing with, with saying that, you know, uh, when I first got on, I said, look, man, we've been doing the same thing, saying the same thing from day one, and no one said anything. Now that we have a chance to be on the internet, why don't we try something new? And I started doing things, certain things outside the box. You know what I'm saying? Outside the box. I started speaking outside, my mind outside the box. Because before, I would, when I first got on, I would just, Marcus Garvey said this, Elijah Muhammad said this, blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to be a minister of Farrakhan. Oh yeah, I'm tell you. Then I started saying, you know something, why don't I just bring my own personality and my own life experience and what I've seen out there? And so uh, when I was talking about my years at the Charlotte Science Institute, it was like, <laughs> you was at a, uh, a, a white institution that taught infrastructure building, nation building and science, and all, how dare you, Carla? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I went to the Charlotte. When I was in my 20s, while well, most guys were out clubbing, I used to go to these meetings and stuff like that, and I study everything there is to learn about nation building, about physical nation building, not just hypothetically or allegorically. I've I studied nation building. I study science. I study history. You know what I'm saying? Intense. You know, I study African history like you won't ever believe. You know, I studied how how nations rose, and then I came to the conclusion back then that black people in America are more than I learned about Liberia, right? And I learned that uh, 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 that black people are more than capable of building a nation and governing themselves. But I never really thought, right? I thought it'd be like 50 years on blog talk radio on the internet before I would get even three people to agree with me. You know what I'm saying? Because I thought black people were just that ignorant, you know? So I just had to keep spilling the nation with the nation thing, right? Then I started meeting more people and saying, you know, something I thought about, you know, what if we did uh, build a nation or whatever? Uh, outside of America and just that, you know, I said, wow, we got, you think like that too? I thought like that, yeah. And I started meeting people who on, on the internet who knew science, who knew business, who knew politics, who knew global trade, who knew all this stuff like this. And I said, you know, how come there is no not any course in college about nation building? Think about that. There's no course in college about nation building. Imagine all the stuff for the BAIO at a BAIO university where you can get your degree in nationhood. You know what I'm saying? You can get your degree and what it takes to build a nation. You know, all the aesthetics, all the philosophy, the science, uh, the math, uh, the history, and then you can get a degree in nature. So by the time you get out, you are capable of joining uh, 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 companies and firms that are dedica- uh, dedicated towards repatriation and building and colonizing uh, the motherland and stuff like that. 
There is no such thing as that in, in colleges. What do most black colleges teach? Integration, academia. Then I learned how uh, academia is controlled by our en enemies. If you control the enemy, so in other words, basically, you take you cut take the head of a group of people, right? So let's just be honest with you. And there may not be a, a physical we, but there are people that influence black America. Let's, let's not be kidding ourselves. The people get out there, if they can basically, it doesn't matter what the masses of black people think. If somebody can get up there on TV, like this would cause riots almost in the 60s, and say, well, this is what we want as a people, right? You see, it does not matter if that person doesn't even have a consensus or even hold the black people, right? As long as the powers that be act on that person thinking that he's your leader and everything, it doesn't matter if he's your leader or not, you know? It's just like when people say, well, I'm a black person. It doesn't matter if you're a black conservative. You have no power. You're a collective power. It doesn't matter if you say Sergeant Jesse Jackson is not your leader. It doesn't matter. As long as white people think he's your leader, he's your leader. You understand? So, like I said, you got the enemy within, the enemy without. You know what I'm saying? How can we survive? As long as white America chooses who our icons are, who our uh, sports figures are, who our rap icons should be, who our philosophers should be, who, who, or as long as they have the ability to pick and choose who is shines above us and everything, we're always going to be in the same situation we're in right now. And the only way you can get a break from that is say, look, we want to start all, tear the whole system down and start all over again. And how do you do that? And you say, look, we're withdrawing from this whole system. You call America e uh, 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 illegitimate. You know what I'm saying? In other words, basically, we're in captivity, and anybody who cooperates with this system is a traitor and an enemy within. You know, as simple as that. And a lot of people don't like when I say that, right? Because the bottom line is this. There is no leader, no leader, none, none whatsoever that can say that they speak for the masses of black people. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Nobody, nobody in America can say, nobody was ever elected uh, 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 a president of black America. No one ever said that. But yet people speak for us. They speak on our behalf. They basically run around saying this is what black folks want. This is what black people need. This is what black people need. How do you know? You Kyle, 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 there, there's a difference. They don't speak for us. They speak to us and tell us what we need. To yeah, and then, and, then, and then that's not the bad part about it. And then they don't even give us a, a like you said, you don't give them a benefit of a reach around. You know what I'm saying? You know, they don't give us a reach around when they stick it to us. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, hold, 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 stop the show. Stop the show. Pause. No, no reach arounds. Pause. Stop the show. <laughs> we're, not, we're not doing that around here. No yeah, yeah, yeah. Pause. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, so you know, they basically say, 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 say to white America, you see, I speak for them. You know what I'm saying? Because they're stupid anyway, like Michael Eric Dyson. Where did this guy come from? You know what I'm saying? This guy came out of nowhere. You know, this guy just bursted on the scene. He just came out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, 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 this guy uh, uh, busted out of nowhere, he just came out of nowhere, just started speaking. Uh, in tongues to black uh, to the world, black people this, black people that, black people that, black people that, and they take some little ad hoc comments and struggles and struggle fetishes, and they say and they link us all together and say this is what black people need, this is what the black people want, and all this kind of nonsense. And no one ever told Michael Eric Dyson to speak for us. No one ever told basically uh, these people that they speak for Black America. No one ever gave anybody uh, the right or whatever to speak for uh, Black America. You don't have that. You don't even have black magazines anymore. It used to be a time where you could say Ebony Magazine sort of spoke for black people, you know what I'm saying, in many ways. You know what I'm saying? Not anymore. Got, not, not, anymore. Not, anymore. not anymore. You know, why do you think they got rid of those institutions like Ebony Magazine and all these things, even black colleges? You know what I'm saying? All these things are basically disappearing. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because the bottom line is they don't want any sort of independent black voice in, in America, in, in, in America. Why? Because they want to be able to control what black people think. You know what I'm saying? They even gave you your own radical organization. Okay, we understand that there's black people we're going to try to, they, 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 they got the carrot, the carrot on the stick say integration. You want to integrate, right? America, right? Here, yeah, it's America, black folks, right? And you know, the bottom line is people are weak, and they're saying, you know something, man? You see that nice house in that suburb, that car? You know, if I can get me that nice red bone one that, that I met in college, 
you know, I can live the, the black American dream. You know what I'm saying? That's what a lot of brothers did, trying to live a black American dream. I got my uh, kids and we're getting our kids are light skinned and, and uh, good hair. And, and when I walk past a group of white people and a white woman, oh, those some pretty Negro children. You know what I'm saying? I got the good car and, hey, and hey, this thing. What, what, what did they say, uh, Carla? They oh, man, I've seen this before. Ooh, she got that pretty hair. And that's all that matters, you know what I'm saying? And the bottom line is so black people go on a, a self-genocide thing, making sure they, they marry the lightest thing they can find, you know what I'm saying? Right, uh, 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 Matthew Knowles said that, you know, Alabama's out in Blake. You know, you, marry, you better marry somebody uh, red. You better marry somebody dear white. Why? Because the new Alabama society is about being white or being white acceptable. You know what I'm saying? So and then you at, you sit yourself and you ask yourself the question: What is Black America? If the people and the people that's running Black America don't want to be black, or they're trying to genocide their race or race mix and all the stuff like that, or, or basically try to get away from blackness and all the stuff, what is being black? Who the hell is being black? What is Black America? And and why do people uh, continue to act like they speak for the majority of black people? You know, see, other people have this thing. Where they're trying to self preserve. You know what I'm saying? You can tell Chinese is trying to be a Chinese. That's why he builds his business. That's why he has all these things that you can play about. Why do we have no black businesses? We need to have black businesses. We need to have black businesses. But you don't want to be black, Negro. You know what I'm saying? You cannot say everybody wants to talk to us in the abstract. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to be black, but everybody wants to be black. You know what I'm saying? We got a nice dude that, uh, that speaks well for black people named Sean King. But the dude doesn't look black. You know what I'm saying? You know, and about he said Sean. You got racial said, racial dozer. You said and whatnot. You said Sean King. Yeah. Malcolm X. Yeah, I don't know who he. I don't know who he. Talk when he first came on, when he first came on, he was more hip hop. He started talking about hip hop issues, right? You know, and he was the one who inspired me to start getting into blogging and saying saying it like it is. When I first heard him back in the, ten years ago. He said, "Say it like it is. Say it with your heart, man." Don't, you got this medium to express yourself with everything. I agree. With I said I didn't know. I didn't. I did not know the guy was black. I thought he just talked about hip hop issues. That's when he first started with hip hop issues. You know, and I had to listen to him because he was the only few people that were talking any political or anything like that. You know, we were talking about at the time. You know, the structure of hip hop and everything on black people, or whatever. I don't know. Like I said, and I was inspired by him. You know, I'll say hey, look, yeah. but I was like, I never thought he was black. Now this guy is like, damn, yeah. I'm like, dude, man, you got to stay in role. You ain't black enough to be talking about no black issues. You know what I'm saying? Dude, go away. Sit down. You know? You ain't black enough to talk about it. Then you got racial Dozier and all these other people. Everybody wants to be blingy black. You know what I'm saying? Until it's time not to be blingy. You, know, you see that case where the uh, the uh, the white gang member, he was with his crip friends and everything. You hold heard on, about that? Hold on. Hello, we got to talk about that because I'm familiar with the area. Now, the white kid was from Rancho Palos Verdes. Yeah. Like yeah. you're not like you're not gonna find a home in Rancho PV for less than two million dollars, probably. Right. Like where he's from. And it's just it's just crazy how we're right. so I mean you do you do understand the origins of the Crips, right? Yeah, the Crips is in the hood, you know. But no 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 no, but even before that, they were they were like they were the Crips were formed to oh, fight yeah. his wife's white 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 no, no, no. I'm saying, no, I'm talking. So the white, the, oh, yeah, yeah. the, the um, so they were founded to fight against white supremacist gangs, right? Mm -hmm. yep, yep. And they, it's just we're so quick to allow, you know, so to, to have this, be proud of this token white guy. And now he, now if it would have been me driving that car, because you're talking about the case where uh, he was, he was a driver, had two, the two black gang members are in the in the back seat. They 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 assumed that this random this brother who was actually a college student was in a rival gang and they killed him and he was the getaway driver. Now, by law, usually, if you're in that vehicle, everyone's getting persecuted from from for murder. Yep. Prosecuted for murder. Yep. But since he's white, they they let him go. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and he was also a member of the gang, so. You know, they have that was it a gang, the kingpin and all these other laws, whatever you want to call it, that implicates all gang members. If you're involved in a murder, all the gang members who are there get hit with murder. 
mm-hmm. get prosecuted. Yep. But it's they but they let him go. But Negroes is just I, I don't know. I just don't yeah, know. Well, like I said, well, that's why I said we're dealing with them these niggas tonight. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna crush these people tonight. And the more they keep coming after me, like I'm suspended on Facebook by a race traders. Who after me? You know what I'm saying? I can't. This is my third time. And, 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 and it was crazy. Sorry, sorry to cut you off, Colin. What's crazy about the case? He lives in Rancho PB, so he comes down the hill. So I want to say Crenshaw. I think it's Crenshaw. Crenshaw dead ends in Rancho PB. So mm-hmm. just imagine Crenshaw starts. I think around the La Brea area. So it mm-hmm. goes like Miracle Mile. Uh, then you go <coughs> like uh, uh, you know the hood, like we're from Boys in the Hood. Mm-hmm. Then you go through like Inglewood, and then you go through Torrance, Carson, and then it ends in like one of the richest, I would say, areas in California, Rancho PV. So mm-hmm. he comes down the hill when he wants to to part time gangbang, and he mm-hmm. goes back to living his affluent white privileged life. Yeah. But the gang members, gang bangers, they stuck in the hood gangbanging. So he can yeah, yeah. go, you know. Go yeah, back. And, 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 and let me talk. Let me talk a little bit. You got me you. Let me talk a little bit about that, right? I see this happen all the time. I see it happen on Virginia Beach. White kids get bored. You know what I'm saying? They get bored with their suburban lifestyle, right? You ever see a movie, uh, White Boys? You know what I'm saying? White, white, white Boys uh, that came out a decade ago. You know what I'm saying? Same situation. They get bored with like, and, and this is what I'm telling you. White people are behind the black gang in the criminal culture. In America, I'm sorry. I hate the fact that I'm the only one saying this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody else says the the, the ball to say this because you're, because you don't want to offend your favorite rapper, your favorite TV show, your all this kind of bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I do not agree with black and white people being together at on on that sort of level. You know what I'm saying? Malcolm X even talked about that. He said he, Malcolm X said he, said he never like he said he got he has a thing about white people hanging around black ghettos and stuff, stuff like that. White people, the negativity that you see in black America is really white people. You know what I'm saying? But they come to us to, they go back into their nice, white, pure worlds, right? But they use us as a conduit to relive some fantasy of a ghetto life. Now, if that guy wanted to be tough, why did he join the, the, lo- the local, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, what's the, what's the taco, uh, taco Bowman's uh, biker gang? You know what I'm saying? Or Hell's Angels or the Mongols, something like that. Those guys are rougher than the Bloods and Crips. You know what I'm saying? White biker gang. I grew up in upstate New York around white biker gang. Black gangs ain't nothing on this. You know what I'm saying? These guys are contract murderers, drug dealers, some of everything. You know, hardened criminals. You know what I'm saying? So, so the bottom line is they make this bloods and crips, which is black communities, just, just, it's just dysfunctional. So they have this whole thing with all oh, white kids, they want to join the bloods and the crips and all that. You had mafia. I grew up in New York one night. You had Irish uh, mob gangs and mafia families that are just 10 times more dangerous than black criminal gangs could ever be because they're more connected and whatever like that. And also because they're white. You know what I'm saying? But the bottom line is why is it that they choose to be choose to, to live vicariously to black gangs? Why? Because it still amounts to white supremacy and racism. You know what I'm saying? Because he knows that if he hangs around Black people, when that he could you always use that white skin to get him out of the situation. He could look like he was led astray, you know. And so that's why I don't like movies, TV shows like Power. You know what I'm saying? I don't like all these TV shows with showing black and whites. Uh, uh we're, we're a family now. And okay, get the hell out of here with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Fifty Cent is a race traitor. You know what I'm saying? He's a traitor. You know what I'm saying? He's pushing this garbage and whatnot. You know. I don't like how Floyd Mayweather got back at him. You know what I'm saying? You see what Floyd said to him? Floyd said, yo, 50, you worth $20 million, right? After all this, right? He goes, I got a watch. He showed his watch. My watch is worth more than you are. Damn, 50. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Damn, 50. He just called you out, said, you worth $20 million. My watch is worth more than you. Floyd Mayweather don't do drugs. He don't, he don't uh, drink. He don't do none of that crap you do. Talk about and promoting everything. He don't hang around white folks. He don't do none of that stuff like that. And this guy is the highest paid athlete on the friggin' planet. You know what I'm saying? And he says, and, and you talk about he can't even, he can't even read and write. So what does Floyd May rather do? Like, Floyd, somebody said Floyd May to who, who's cool, but yeah, uh, uh-uh, he's almost worth a billion dollars or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? He ain't no damn cool. He would be a coon if he was broke and he had all white people around him 
and white chicks around him taking all his money. That's a coup. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, so this idea of Fort Floyd Mayweather is a, 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 a coup, get the hell out of here with that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you who's a coon. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You don't know enough about this struggle to know who's a coon. People use that word way too loosely. But uh, yeah, getting back to what I was talking about. This, this, so you got these white kids out here. They're living vicariously through black. And that's what that is what is driving this black crime. And it's that uh this uh 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 this uh this uh black gangs and all stuff like this. This gang culture, you know what I'm saying? It's the white kids. I see it out here in Virginia Beach. You know what I'm saying? Black kids will go out there and join gang. Why? Because what little white girls are impressed by that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my I got a boyfriend. He's a blood member. You know what I'm saying? He's a crypt. He's tough or not. You know, this, that, and the other thing. Black girls not really, really, black girls not really into that like that. And then what, what you have is our boy KK down in Texas. You know what I'm saying? The dude, uh, his girl, same situation. She was the ring leader in the murder. No, no, but, but the girl, but the girl got busted though, right? She's getting. She's yeah, actually she getting she, did, she pled and got twenty years, and she basically pled. She went to the police, and caught the deal. She was gonna set it all up, and she got twenty years. You know what I'm saying, he's facing the death penalty. You know what I'm saying, his friend got life imprisonment. He's facing the death penalty. You know what I'm saying. So the bottom line is, the bottom line is this: When does this madness start? The madness starts when black men start being real black men. Cut this American shit off. You know what I'm saying? Nothing's good is coming out of uh, America. You know what I'm saying? If you got to go out there and commit crimes and be a fool and be a thug and all stuff like this and, and entertain these people, you are a freaking fool. You are a freaking fool. And what gets me is this, Dinus. People will say, you know something, Colin, man? I don't know, man. You got something about your nana. I don't know how the world's going to take it. The world can accept black gangs and gangbangers and some of everything that exists on this damn planet. They can accept the fact that some black people are just added with America and won out. You know what I'm saying? They can, we can accept everything else on the damn planet, but the idea that black people want a nation of their own, oh, that's that's beyond the pale. That won't even be mentioned in the mainstream media. You know what I'm saying? So we, the reason why the BALs will grow and to the point where they can't stop it is because they're going to try to ignore us. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, it goes back to the thing. When people see this momentum, oh, I don't know what the BAL is, you know what I'm saying? So in other words, basically, you talk about the black struggle, and then one group of gay, one group of people, organization that came out and said, "Look, we got a solution for Black America for the future and beyond, land infrastructure nation." And you never heard of them? No, no, no. Interesting, very, very interesting. You know why? Because these people got a struggle fetish. It's a, it's a struggle itself is why they're there. They're there in the, in the struggle fetish. It's a struggle fetish, you know. We have a situation down in Florida. You know, I don't know what to do about the state of Florida. You know what I'm saying? We keep having these outrages. The uh, the lady with the four dollars and then down to four cents. Uh, they, uh, she got to tell her kids that her uh, father's not no more because the police shot through the garage door, killing the man. You know what I'm saying? And then they recognize it was wrong, but we're gonna give you a uh, a settlement of four dollars. You know what I'm saying? That is basically white white trash. You know what I'm saying? Who are eight, who hate black people? Who hate the fact that despite everything they try to do to us, there's still black people who are able to buy homes and live next to them and succeed despite all the stuff like this. And they all say, "Oh yeah, man, Trump's gonna really end the affirmative action." Not so. This one white guy, go right ahead. I'm calling your bluff. I will pull your card. Go ahead. Go. I, I, I dare you to end uh, so-called affirmative action because you're gonna find out that we didn't benefit from it anyway. You know what I'm saying? All affirmative act for action was going to do by our enemies, you know what I'm saying, is uh, 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 is uh, is give white people excuse to, I listened to one radio show, and it was like, call, let's call in now and tell us your affirmative action horror story. Well, they took this show off the air for like two hours, and they said, oh, we have a technical problem in the area. Well, we the show's not going to be aired right tonight or whatever like that. I want to hear it. It's right. So anyway, they took the guy's show off the air, for that. but I knew it was a technical problem. He was getting up there saying white people call in that tonight when I in a local radio station in this area like, no, we can't have that. You know, we can't well, we cannot have that. We cannot have that. You know, they took the uh, thing off the air. Uh they canceled the show for the next night. But then the next night the guy wasn't on, he had a guest host. So anyway, I, I'm saying to myself, I'll say to myself, the bottom line is this. 
You have all these white people calling up, but oh yes, I was supposed to get this job, and this minority took my job. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying I was so overqualified, I did all this, and they just handed away. Where in the God's name does somebody uh, get uh, have qualifications? He can make a company, lots of money, and everything like that, and they're gonna go and give a so-called unqualified minority a job. That doesn't happen in this planet in this lifetime. You know what I'm saying? White people are 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 like. Hey, look, you know, if you see black people or minorities at all on the job, it's because uh, they may they had to give uh, white people. They don't like the fact that they have to compete with black people at all for jobs. In other words, basically, they'll take our money. Walmart, basically, black America gives probably 10 percent of this income to Walmart. But the fact that you got so many black people at Walmart is man, all oh, that. See, all these black people working at Walmart. That's the thing. Well, doesn't black people shop here? Doesn't matter. See, see, it doesn't work both ways because they're they consider our money part of their infrastructure. We made our money through their infrastructure, so technically they believe that that, that, that our money is really theirs. So tell me what has happened. What's changed in 400 years? White people always benefited from our labor. You know, they always well. You cannot let me break this out to you. If people listen to the show don't or not know how wealth is created, wealth is created through labor. You know what I'm saying. Human exertion, producing something, moving something, storing something, you know, saying lifting something, whatever like that, transporting something, right? And then people consuming something. You know, saying you got production and consumption. The means of production and consumption, whether a good or service, but is the basis of wealth. You know, saying and it happens in a in a particular space. You have a space or area right here where goods and services are exchanged. Wealth is being created. Who controls that uh, means of production is the ones that's going to benefit the most from that. And the person who's free labor, he gets all of that. If he has to pay wages, he still makes the lion's share, but he has to share it with a labor force, right? Now, when that person does generate a wages, right? Now, a smart the smart company will do is this: they'll buy up the whole town. They'll make sure everything that that person that they paid the labor to the wages to. That money get, generally goes back to them anyway. You know, the old, uh, this cleaning service, this gas station right here, everything. You go to the South here, you'll have one cu couple of families that own everything. They own the gas station. They got your money. They own the supermarket, the gas station. They own everything. They own that, that rock quarry over there. They own that uh, uh, car lot over there. You get to buy a car. They own the local bank where you're going to get a car note from. They own all this stuff like this, you know. Because so your money that you generate and everything, your sweat and labor, is going to go right back to them. And that's the way it is for 400 years. I had a white guy tell me that one time. Hold he on said, real quick, Kyla. Hold on real quick, Kyla. Guys, can we please get the likes up? We have 131 people watching, only 64 likes. Please hit that like button. All right, go ahead. Let me meet myself. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I had a, a white guy tell me this one time. He said uh, his family, right? His family. This was a couple years ago. I was Uber. And uh, he said, this guy, guy, guy I, mean, I mean, how how to take him, he's a southerner. But he was one of those type of southerners, probably, he probably traveled the world. He had, like, kind of long hair, but, you know, you know he probably did go wherever. You know, you don't say like that. He has a son that's uh, uh, in his 20s, wherever, like that. Well, anyway, educated, you know what I'm saying? He's educated, but he kind of lives on the edge a little bit. And he was telling me, he was like, you know, you see, see the hospital over here? He said, his, he told me his family has been in this area. For, since his first family. I know where he's going with this, you know. He said, my family were the first settlers in this area. You know, we've been here for 400 years in Chesapeake area, Chesapeake area. He said, the hospital, the most of the land of public uh, buildings are on was owned by my family. You know, said, so we get royalty checks from the hospital. The high land the hospital's on, I get a check where he invested, he tells me I invested, you know, in stocks and stuff like that. He's a day trader, you know. He invested in stocks and stuff like that, you know, money, got money all over the place, right? Anyway, uh, he was just basically telling me, man, he said, look, man, the white man, he said, look, the white man, he goes, you people, man, he said, if you were real smart, he said, you better save Africa because the white man is coming. He said, if you don't believe nothing I would tell you, he said, the white man is coming. He said, the Congo, that's where all the world's wealth is and everything like that, and they'll do the same thing. He said, we'll do the same thing that happened to the Native Americans and everything. We'll do the same thing in Africa. He said, only oh, you black people in America can stop it. You know? And I was like around four years ago. 
And I said to myself, and I'm always, I'm always doing shows and everything. I said, I ain't let, let on that I, that I speak the way I do and everything. I said, yeah, you know something? That's right, man. That's a good idea. That's some good knowledge. Man. Thanks for telling me. I already know, you know. But he was just telling me. The bottom line is this. The bottom line is he's telling his people are no good. You can't trust them. You know what I'm saying? They will exploit you. They will enslave you. And they will take everything from you and everything like that. And uh, and uh, and if you don't do something, you know, what I'm saying you people are doing, you better start loving yourself and thinking yourselves as a people, and then fight back, you know. And then uh, yeah, you get to the uh, thing where you get so drained, right? I remember feeling so drained after that hearing that. I said, why is it that our people are just so freaking loving and so stupid, you know? So loving and so stupid, so just everything. You wonder why? Why you ain't got shit, right? Why? Because other people, everything is about business. Securing their bloodline and protecting their families and making sure their families and bloodlines are secure for hundreds of years is their business. Making sure their flow of goods and services flow around the world is business. The black man in America doesn't have any means to protect his family. He doesn't have no means to produce goods and services or trade with the world because we choose not to have a land of our own to make our stand. And so therefore the people who are telling us that you know, nationhood is not the answer are the enemy. They're not just another opinion, they are the enemy. They are people that want to keep us in bondage and slave inside of America. Because no matter what we do in America, another race of people are gonna benefit from. It. Mexicans at least are smart enough to take 30, 30, 40 billion dollars a year out of the U.S. economy and send it to Mexico. Where did a black America take them my money to? Where's our money go to, Dinos? It goes right back at folks, right back at the uh, 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 Michael Jordan, uh, Nike. Yeah, but stay right back in the, in the white man's system, you know? You know, the white man's system. They always say uh, 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 shit floats down, money floats up. The white man shits on black America. You know what I'm saying? Black people, and he has a big vacuum of money just floats right up back up to him. You know, that's the way it is, a pyramid. Shit floats down, runs down, money rolls back up. You know, that's the way it is. So therefore, uh, we'll talk about that, you know? And also, we'll, we'll, let's talk about that uh, the shooting out in uh, the status. The girl that got slipped, throat slit out in California. Yeah, uh, Nia Nia Wilson, I think her name was. Yeah, somebody said there was a controversy with her father. They said her father. Was no, 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 no. Her her godfather came on and started talking that kumbaya and oh, oh you know, no, Lord. Like, your, your 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 daughter, your your goddaughter just got murdered. You, you on this kumbaya and uh, don't rise up and you know keep your emotions in check. And black people, you need to chill out. And people just like, oh man, come on. Bottom line is this guy was a. Uh, this is another thing. You got uh, what? What part of do you have these Dylan Roots and everything? These guys aren't just out there screaming white power, right? Just like the Bloods and the Crips now are requiring a blood sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? So are the neo Nazis and skinheads. You know what I'm saying? This, he said he got his. He, he was supposed to get his red laces. You know what I'm saying? Red laces. Uh, from what I heard. Red laces was what, what was if you drew blood. It didn't mean kill somebody, right? But I guess now the edict now is if you want your red laces, you got to actually kill somebody black. So he wanted his red laces on his boots. That means you killed someone. You know, and the bottom line, so therefore the skinhead and neo-Nazi gangs are not being taken seriously by black people and other, as, a gang, as a gang problem. You know what I'm saying? He walked up to this girl and slit her throat. Yeah, but what but, was crazy, like I said, in the beginning when these gangs were founded, black gangs were to battle the white supremacist gangs. Yeah, yeah, and that's another thing we want to talk about too. The Crips were founded because the white mobs from the area you just talked about used to come down there and just start brutalizing and beating up black people. So black men would form themselves into uh, groups and blocks and stuff like that. Block associates, same with the Chinese and everybody else form themselves it's a social club to protect the neighborhood. Same thing with Italian, everybody else, right? Black people out in California start a uh, thing. The problem was uh, when the neighborhoods got 
you know, civilized a little bit, organized and everything. Other groups of people put up their stuff like that, and they went back into society. They joined the police departments and stuff like that. Somehow, black gangs just basically stayed on, right? Just doing the same thing, right? And then you had the LA riots and everything like that. The social structure of the black community was destroyed, right? So these gangs, instead of uh, uh, doing what they were intended to do, they started getting into criminal activity, you know? Start, and the police found a way how to make them start killing each other. You know how they do it? They do it like this. If somebody has a beef with somebody, they go beat that person up, right? And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, the police would come, oh, nothing happened here. And the people were like, well, this guy just beat this dude up. Are you going to wrestle him? Got no evidence, all right? So the dude's like, okay, we're going to go ahead and retaliate. They retaliate, blah, 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 right? You go back and forth, right? Then the next time, somebody comes out and pulls out a knife, stabs a person, guy dies. Police comes, I ain't no evidence, you got no evidence. Can you actually see the guy? No, 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 whatever like that. So the dude said, okay, he stabbed me a knife, let's start carrying guns. And this, that's how it escalated. To the point of once you kill, once this crip here kills this crip here or this blood here, whatever like that, you got to retaliate, right? That's your enemy now. And of course, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, it was crazy, Colin. You know, the majority of uh, black on black murder <laughs> going soft. Yeah. They go unsolved. You cannot have a, you, this is another thing. When people want to argue me about, oh, uh, is black on black murder important? Yes, it's important. You cannot have a civilization and situation and have unsolved murders. You know what I'm saying? You cannot have this this many of 85% unsolved murders and be safe. You know what I'm saying? You cannot build anything. Because everything's about probability. When somebody wants to build something or move somewhere, and that's what I'm hearing now is Prince George's County is not having, having a prime wave right now. You know, that's what I'm hearing now. I'm like, wow. I thought that was Mr. Affluent, uh, Black. We made it. You know what I'm saying? We made it up. Moving on up, moving on up. For sure. You know what I'm saying? And I heard they have a crime wave now. You know? And you cannot have a crime. And black areas are not safe. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. The police department's underfunded. Uh, we live in fear that the justice system don't work for us. And so the criminals in black America, the enemy within, has a free reign. You know, we have a free reign. And then we try to justify it. My boy shot Kim. Uh, uh, did you hear th that case where that uh, that activist from uh, Charleston, his killer was arrested and he got shot in uh, 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 New Orleans, Louisiana? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I read about that. Okay, that's my boy shot Kim's uh, good friend. He named his, his school, his boy school after him, right? And he said, yeah, the killer got shot, right? Shot Kim come a long way, did 12 years of federal, but now his brother's so on point. And somebody was saying, well, I don't really trust it. He goes, what do you mean you don't trust it? The guy killed him in cold blood. It got to be a conspiracy. No, no, no. You, what you want to do is continue this impunity of black people being able to kill other black people and saying it don't exist. Black on black murder is the enemy of this. You got the enemy of that white people want to kill us, and you got the black on black murder. Eat, both of them are just as destructive as the other one. You know what I'm saying? You cannot call yourself caring about black people, and you don't even flinch when you hear about a little girl getting shot by a straight bullet. And every night here in uh, Newport News, kids, this young girl, a 15-year-old girl, matter of fact, in Norfolk, last Thursday, a 15-year-old girl was gunned down by a 20-year-old dude. 15. A sophomore in high school. She was gunned down. Pretty little girl. Gunned down. You know, what was she doing out at 11 o'clock at night? I have no idea. But this is a rough area. And, and I give it to the mayor of, of Norfolk. He's doing a, he's a black man. He's doing a, a hell of a job. But if he got policemen on the street, he's doing all this. And still, and then another, the uh, day before that, a 40-year-old brother with five uh, daughters, five beautiful daughters, got killed. But I saw a picture of him, right? And I said to myself, you know, you know, dude, man, uh, you know, I saw a picture. I said, yo, y'all got to stop. Bruce, yo, you're 40. You got to stop that thuggy stuff. You know what I'm saying? You got to leave that shit alone. Leave that shit alone. Leave that thick braids, uh, the red, um, the gold teeth, you know what? Yo, that thug life. You want to be thug, this, that, and your thing. You got people around you telling you how bad you are, this, that, and your thing. Good looking brother, too. You got to say, you, you, so, so, bottom, he got five beautiful daughters, right? Bottom line is, yo, yo, you only a thug until somebody pulls out that gun and says you ain't going to be a, you know what I'm saying? You, you only as tough as that bullet. That's gonna great. That's gonna split your skull. Off. You know what I'm saying? What is it about black men? We cannot get our shit together 
and leave this freaking criminal life alone. You know what I'm saying? We can't, we can't uh, learn how to be gentlemen and men and decent men start raising our families and staying out of trouble and stuff like that. I, th we can build nothing as long as you got people out here and not who, who want instant gratification, instant satisfaction, you know, with the thug life. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else, you got white guys and everybody else, they're out here, man. They, they got their life planned out. They got their wife, wife, they got their kids and everything like that. They got a house in the suburbs and everything. And you got a black man the same age. He's still trying to he should not make it. He, uh, yeah, I gotta get out these streets. I gotta make it. Yo, da, ba, 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 ba. He in the club every night. You running down the streets and everything. You get pulled over by the police. DUI. You know what I'm saying? Some of everything. You know, running from child support and some of every kind of goddamn thing and whatnot. And you wonder why, damn, why my life is so fucking full of hell? You know, we basically have to get it together. You know what I'm saying? We have to get it together. You know, and like I say, in uh, telling people this, I tell you this out of love. If I didn't love my black people, I would tell you there's nothing wrong with you and you're doing everything right. Everything is like that. That's bullshit. You got to look without. We got the enemy without and you got the enemy within. Not just enemy within. We got to all with, look within ourselves. What's in our hearts and minds that make us do bad things? What make us do things that make us lazy or make us stupid, make us evil, you know, and all these things like that? Why do we? Why do we act the way we do? Why do we have so much contempt for each other? Why are we why we don't love each other? You know what I'm saying? Why do we hate our race? I look at some of these conversations on YouTube. You know, I mean, you cannot believe colorism is still a freaking issue. You know, and I'm like, yo, uh, it just it just uh, you know, colorism, classism, black male, black first, black female. It's like, look, oh, okay, have mercy. All I can say is nationhood has to be the answer to all this, right? And people, and I'm gonna tell you, I'll tell you something, Dinosaur. What I love about the BAO, who's coming in, are people. Is, is not, we have not had any gender conflict in our group. We have not had any that everybody respects each other. Everybody comes in, and people always state about well, some people you join the BAO don't have a profession yet. They could be working at Burger King. Nobody judges them, right? But, but I can tell you right now, that person uh, is, uh, is, uh, is so inspired, right? Because we got one, I got one brother, right? Uh, that always tells me all the time. Yeah, I know you tell us hold up too. He would tell man, you guys, and uh, African warlord X, right? I would tell man, you guys inspired me. He was he was so inspired by African warlord X's science and everything like that that this brother now is in the BAL is our top guy studying engineering and science. He's been with us for years, just by hearing one of our radio shows uh, years ago. You know, just so inspired by what we were thinking. So, but at the time he was running, didn't know what he was doing. He had a wife and, you know, working, you know, odd jobs and everything like that. But then he said, oh, that's where I want to go. And I have no doubt this brother's going to be a top engineer in the world one day. You know what I'm saying? Making money like you won't believe. And it's going to help us with our mission. You know what I'm saying? So the bottom line is, the bottom line is this. The, with the BAO, my job is to inspire people. You know what I'm saying? Inspire people. I know people that join the BAO. You don't have to have it. Uh, professor join if you feel this in your heart and this, this is what you want to be this is the type of people that's going to love you and give you support join our organization you know what i'm saying and then state what you do and say what you want to do you know especially if you're young you're young you're 20s 30s early 40s and everything. you're young you know what i'm saying say what you want to do what do you want to do out of life what do you want to be you know what i'm saying you got your whole life ahead of you what do you want to be everyone could go out there and get into a school or Learn. Everybody can pick up books and learn. But we cannot do it if we have a culture of mediocrity. Our culture, it, it, the culture of dumbing down black America is a culture of mediocrity. It teaches you how to be stupid and simple. And when you're mediocre, you know what I'm saying, the white man, he's out there and he's macro managing the world. You know what I'm saying? While you sit there and be mediocrity, what you argue over if you look at most black talk shows, what are they talking about? Stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? What, who had on what? Listen to this stupid breakfast show in the morning. You know what I'm saying? With Charlamagne and Fool and all these other people. What are they talking about? Stupid stuff. Stuff that has no meaning. Don't move the people forward. Don't do anything. You know? No other group of people, no other organization is talking about science. Talking about science. When I first came on the radio, I'll get back to this. Basically, I said to myself, I said, you know, I... I don't know how black people are going to take, you know, 
talking about business, right? So I had Tom, I met Thomas, and uh, and uh, and uh, he was like, yeah, you know, Thomas is a genius when it comes to money and business. You know, when it comes to business, trade, money, and do- whatever, Thomas is our guy. You know, and so I said, you know, uh, why don't we have a uh, show on Wednesday nights called the Ujama? You know, and then I said, how do you how do you mix like Kwanzaa and stuff like that, Ujama with modern business, right? That's what we're going to be a hybrid, have African inspired stuff, but we talk about modern business. We ain't talking about donate and uh, let's pull out our resources to get pull our resources together and have a Ujama. No, we will talk about how to basically talk about money, finance, business, you know, credit, trade unions. And all these things like that, you know, we start to uh, uh, guess would come on nervously talking about, yeah, you know, business and banking, international banking and trade and finance and stuff like that. And so people are like, wow, it's amazing. This is the first time I ever heard a black nationalist group start talking on this level. Think about this. Uh, uh, real, 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 real quick, uh, Kyle, everybody, please get the likes up. We have 155 people watching, only 92 likes. Uh, Chief Drino, thank you for the super chat. He says, perilous times, but peace, love, and unity, family. Time to disown the killer clowns and thugs in our communities. There won't be any progress if we don't give them up. It's okay to snitch, question mark. All right, go ahead. Okay, uh, sister Crumb Herb. Okay, Chris, uh, sister Crumb Herb said, children are not interested in STEM as it's not presented correctly. You know, oh, well, it's the whole thing is this. If children are not interested in STEM, you know what you will do? Take their cell phone away from them. Take the computer away from them. Take all the stuff that, uh, 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 don't let them go to the movies. Don't let them go something like that. If you don't want to be involved in science and everything, you don't want to, you want to consume all these things that give us all these things, cell phones, internet, and technology and everything, but you don't want to know how they made. But I guarantee you one thing, there's a Chinese kid that wants to know how it's made, how coding and Coltane and all the uh, uh, minerals are, are, are made to build and uh, 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 the crate the things. Uh, <coughs> how are uh, streets made? How are railways made? You know what I'm saying? How do we get electricity? They don't like STEM. You know, check this out. Just uh, they don't like STEM. You know what you do? Take their freaking uh, electricity away. Say we're gonna live in the house uh, for for a week without electricity. Till you show me. How electricity is made, how it's produced, and how it's delivered to the house, you know, and everything. If you don't start doing stuff like this, you don't want to start doing stuff like this. The kids, of course, are going to be ignorant. If the parents are ignorant, it ain't the kids; it's the parents. When I was a kid, my parents used to, at a certain time of the day, TV went off, or not. We pulled out the encyclopedias, and they gave us stuff to study. You know what I'm saying? And I, we was always interested in learning. You got to make learning fun. And say you're gonna do it or else. That's it. You got too many parents out there who uh, you go to their house and whatnot. The kids are running wild. The TV's on and everything. The parents are out there do, and they're doing their thing. Oh, kids are interested in STEM. If you're stupid, how do you expect your kids to be smart? You have to be the parent. You have to be the example. You know. So the bottom line, the bottom line is this. The bottom line is. This. If if uh if you don't if, if our kids are not interested in STEM and science and how things work and everything and how the world works and everything how infrastructure works and all stuff like this then what you're basically saying is we're just going to be mindless consumers and we're a burden on the society because if you don't feel if the society do not feel that you're contributing everything they feel like oh we got some place you ever been watching some of these videos some of these videos and I and I see it sometimes in, up close right. And uh, yeah, man, he shot him and whatnot. He shot him, blah, 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 blah. and I'm saying to myself, why is it this many adults out there living in these housing projects? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it just unbelievable. I'm like, I mean, you mean to tell me all these men out here, all these big, strong, strapping men, and you got you got to live on Section Eight, and you got to live in a situation where where uh uh. Well, well uh, unfortunately, police don't have to respect you. You know, they public housing authorities don't have to respect you. They don't have to do anything because they figure, okay, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? You know what I'm saying? You go to the plane, uh, we'll take your Section 8 voucher. You live in this system. The white, you, think, you think the white man gives you all the Section 8 and all the stuff, food sets and everything? 
for free? No, he did give that to you because he knows he could take it away from you at any time. But when you say, look, you know something, I'm going to work a job. I got to work three jobs. I'll get my family in a nice house, a nice area, in a nice area. I'm going to encourage other black people to do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Buy a house, buy a house, rent, whatever we have to do in a nice area. And we're going to do the same thing. We have to work around the clock. We're going to do it. I want to give our kids a, a better life and better environment. But no, you want to sit there and uh, uh, crowd into a Section 8 housing and uh, all this stuff like this and then wonder, gee, why is all these bad things happening to me? And everything? Why? Because the bottom line is this. is crime, and you're not to justify this crime. It's shooting every night, and so when the police get the order that there's something happening in your neighborhood, and then not only that, it's not even happening in the black neighborhood, and then you go to the white area, white people are calling the police on you every 24 hours a day, seven days a week and everything, and then in your own black neighborhood, police are like, I got the rule, okay, shoot the kill, you know, kill them. You know, kill them. Just, just get rid of them. You know what I'm saying? We don't care what you do. Bust them side the head. Whatever. It's hell for the black man in America. But why willingly put yourself in a situation where, where uh, uh, you know it's going to be perpetual? Get your family out of these situations. You know, everything. You know, get them from around people that are neg uh, negatively influencing you. You know, and it just, it just, you know, it's just a sad commentary. The commentary, because we have to look at this and like that, you know, you know, every time we look around, there's, there's always something happening in the hood and this, that, and the other thing. And what do you, what do you, what can you do about it? What can we, what, what in the world can we do about it? It's just sad. So it's just, uh, you know, uh, I'm just telling you something that people, uh, that people really need to hear. I don't understand circumstance and everything like that, but the bottom line is we cannot keep living like this. Whatever happened to uh, then, then, as Brother Holop always says, if you have a landlord and tenant mentality, you know, what I'm saying you're no, less likely to want to keep. Uh, if you don't own what you have, you're not going to want to uh, have upkeep. There used to be a time when people were trying to form their own black block associations and everything, and do their own patrols in the neighborhood, keep the people safe, and everything like that. But you got older heads, man. They're scared of these young boys. The reason why they scare these young boys because the young boys are looking at them like, well, geez, man, why should I listen to you? You sitting here living with your baby mama, uh, you know, on a thing, you know. I know all your business. You know what I'm saying? You you ain't got no job, whatever like that. So the young boys ain't respecting you. They're out there doing their thing and everything, and they're wild. Now, I come from South Jamaica, Queens. That was a strong black patriarchal society. Young boys did not run South Jamaica Queens. It just did not happen. You had too many big, strong black men from the South that had homes for generations, that worked longshoremen, strawmen, that uh, men that basically were picking and uh, loading bales of uh, potatoes since they were eight years old. And they went to New York, worked longshoremen, got into civil service, did what they had to do. Bought homes from the 19, late 1950s on and everything. They built a whole freaking community out there where patriarchal societies or patriarchal cultures existed. You didn't walk around, you talking to such, you address Mr. Such as, as Mr. Such and Such. You know what I'm saying? And that man could be a sanitation worker, but when he went outside on Sunday, you saw him with a nice suit and tie on and everything. Hey, Mr. Such and Such. Hey, Mr. Such and Such. How you doing? You know? Let me get your groceries for you. It was a difference. It was a difference towards black people back then that we don't have right now. But we don't have role models in the areas where we live at. We don't have role models. We don't have people saying, well, gee, you know, he's successful. He's got a wife, kids, and everything. Got a house. I want to be like him. That's all a lot of black people wanted. They want a wife. They want a wife. They want a house. They want kids and everything like that. The American dream is all that black people want, ever wanted. And the bottom line, the bottom line is we didn't have all this stuff. We had drug deals and everything out there, was out there, but they kept quiet. They kept themselves. They didn't run the people out of the community. I got my family still lived there. You know, it's been since 1959. My family started moving south to make Queens from North Carolina. My mother's father came from home. I got my father's side of the family still out there. You know, since 1959. You know, still got that home. Home paid off 20, 20 30, 30 years ago. 
still out there, you know? And they got Jamaica states, black thriving, black upper middle class community out there. You know what I'm saying? So the bottom line, the bottom line is this. Uh, you have black areas where black people do their thing and everything like that, do their thing. And then you have black people who, you know, who try to fuck it up. But the bottom line is this, I, you know, now as far as, as far as like South Jamaica now, I don't know how it is now. You know, it's, I, I really do think uh, the bottom has dropped out. I, I, my generation didn't stay there. Everybody moved on, cousins and everything, moved out to Long Island, moved upstate. Some move down to Florida and stuff like that. So you may have had, uh, and uh, from what I hear, gentrification is even starting to creep in out there. I, I find it hard to believe because South Jamaican Queens was like living in uh, living in a black country. The closest you're gonna have to living in a black country, where you have rich black people with like mansions and working class and middle class and poor black people living in the projects, all living in one black society. That's when you have a society when you have different levels of black people living together, different religions of black people living together, and somehow we made it. It was a black culture, a black society. You know what I'm saying? It was a black culture, a black society, and black people got along with each other. They like being being with each other. So, <laughs> so I don't I don't know what's you know how how long the future will last. You want to ask some questions? Yeah, let's see what, let's see what uh, questions we got in the chat room. Uh, there really weren't too many questions in the chat room. Someone asked, when were you leaving? I mean, that's that was it. Just a lot of uh, just a lot of statements. Uh, any any questions in the uh, in the chat room, people, family? Uh, leaving where, you know, uh, I guess um, to to wherever. After. No. Oh, oh. Oh, this is what people go. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me break right down for you. How many times do we gotta say this? You know, uh, say this right. Well, we say building an African nation, what not. That's the end goal. You know, what I'm saying the end goal. The end goal is Black America, part part of Black America, right? Black America should not be confined to the fifty states of America. In other words, basically, if let's say you're saying, you know, something, I'm tired of New York or not. You're know saying. What are we gonna move to, you know, or Jersey? Everybody, where did everybody go? Atlanta. We all down in Atlanta. Now everybody's leaving Atlanta saying this place ain't one way to crack up to be. You know what I'm saying? They're getting the hell out. You know, people moving back to New York from Atlanta. And I got people in Virginia. I mean, I was down there, man. Shit. It was good for a while, man. You saw all the stuff like that, but I got the hell out of there, right? Okay, so let me ask you a question. Should the only place black people ever move to, or African American move to, should be confined to uh, what we commonly call the United States of America. You know, uh, is there a, is this something binding us to the 50 states of America that we cannot move someplace else? Wouldn't it be nice if we had a place outside of America that would say, you know, something we would like to live over here, right? We'd be around our own people and have the same sort of amenities, build uh, uh, towns, whatever like that invest and everything another sort of outlet besides the united states of america some people can't even fathom that oh when you leave when you leave when you leave say no 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 call you can't do that why i'll say well i moved to another word basically or your logic right i just should have never moved from new york to virginia that's not the same thing that's not the same thing Colin. how's that the same thing well virginia is still part of the united states but who defined the united states you know but if you say that people should be don't stay where they're born at, you know what I'm saying? So, 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 in other words, basically, you're saying the uh, should I move? If I say I want to go to Canada, would it be right? No, no, no. Canada is not the United States. But technically, Canada, aside from an imaginary border that don't exist and everything, Canada and the United States is fact the same piece of territory land. So, in other words, psycho. What it is is mentally and psychologically, you're bound to. What you etched in your mind is the 50 states of the, it's called the border to border mentality, Ralph Ellison said. You're confined to the borders of, the, of America and you believe that's your manifest destiny. The manifest destiny of a white people from the 13 colonies was sea to shining sea. That was the white man's manifest destiny, sea to shining sea. And that was etched by George Washington, all these people who saw that one day we're going to have a nation on the map that's going to span states from 
from New York to uh, California. That's the, that was their dream. They were going to take half of Mexico from there and span north of the Rio Grande to California. That was going to be America, right? Now, once they got that land, and when they they uh, had their little white heaven. Now, their little white heaven, if you haven't figured this out, is always going to be your white hell. Why? Because Thomas Jefferson and all these people made sure that, that to, to leave behind a legacy, which their, their descendants would always be ambivalent, if not hostile hatred towards the African descendants of slaves. They have more contempt for the slave descendants than they did the Native Americans. They considered us nothing but beasts and animals unworthy of this uh, new republic. Now, there were black people who were free black people under colonial times in America. Some of the Dutch colonies, there were no free black communities in New York, upstate New York, Nan Nantucket, Massachusetts, Boston. Free black communities that were thriving at one time and everything. They met, and then George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and a couple other people met in a town. I don't know if you ever heard of this town called Binghamton, New York. You ever heard of Binghamton, New York, uh, Dynasty? Okay, Binghamton is not too far from Poughkeepsie, okay? Not too far from where I grew up, right? It's a small town upstate New York, right? And they, they discussed <coughs> they discuss, uh, long-term plans about America and America's future. One of the things they discussed was, discussed was one of the main reasons why they wanted to go to war with the British was they said uh, the British were starting to give black people sort of equal rights under the uh in the colonies as whites and they basically said no we want this we want to create a white nation and if we ever fight a war against the british right the first thing they're going to do is disenfranchise the black people right and get rid of them how uh, some way so way so kick them out of the country or re-enslave them that's what george washington and all these other people uh thought you cannot have a race of free black men in America, because black men were thriving. You cannot have black businessmen walking around with nice suits on and everything like that, right? While white men, while you're telling people this is a white man's country. So therefore, this is why most of the lynchings throughout history were done against black men with money. They were the main, black people who were successful were the main targets of lynching and uh, killing in America. Why? Because your success is a mockery to them. Don't let them tell you that anytime you see success in America it's because of America. No, it's in spite of America. America never wanted us to success. America goes around the world telling the world, telling the world, and have the world convinced that we're 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 the cause of all America's problems. You get rid of through the movies, through the media, the message is clear, right? It's always something negative about African Americans and African descendants slave descendants in America. So therefore, how can you have a country, how, how can you have a country where you saluting a flag that basically tells, told you from day one, we don't want you here. We don't want you here. You know, we don't want you here. And then, uh, and, and then uh, you're going to salute that flag. Shout out to Brother Holopsism, man. Man, he's been putting it down. Holop, Holop Thanos is in the house, everyone. Holop yeah, Thanos. Shout like, out to Holop. Oh, Holop said something interesting on the show uh, the other day. He got mute. Uh, he said, he said, uh, somebody said in the chat room said, you know, I, I before before I before I, 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 I before I join something, I, 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 I want I, I, I want to know everything about it. Where the land at? Where the land at? Where, where the land at? It was, I was, I was just doing everything. The whole said, "Well, aren't you on uh, uh, YouTube?" Yes, no. And the same dude on Facebook. Facebook got your whole life history. Say, I don't join that. They got Facebook knows everything you do. But yet, when you come to the BAIO, we just ask two simple questions: Black, do you believe in African American child nation at all? That's too much. This race, that's too much. Man, you, you go on their Facebook page, but the Instagram page. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, they got everything you want to know about them. You know what I'm saying? People post up nude pictures. They tell them where they're taking a piss. You know what I'm saying? At 2 o'clock today, I went to the gym. Give their whole life story out there. The BL, oh, I got to know more about it. I got to know about it. I, I, I can't join them. I, you know, it's a social network, jackass. 
You know what I'm saying? All you do is go join. Just you, you don't have to say nothing. You go look at some of our blogs, look at some of our videos and everything, and find out who you are, get in what you fit in. You know, we're not asking for any money. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, uh we're not asking for any money. We're not like that. Uh, yeah, okay. The Dunmore Proclamation of uh, Dundas said the Dunmore Proclamation of the Seven Civil Rights of Bridge Gate Freedom. They and they fought. Uh, if they fought for yeah. But the thing is, though, even before that, uh, there was arguing back and forth debates about what uh, uh the free the 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 uh, the uh, uh, role of black people post the uh, uh, the uh, 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 thing in seventeen seventy five was a year before the uh, thing, and they said that's giving free black people free. They said now we got to win this war, you know. So when you got black people out here celebrating the Fourth of July. And let's talk about the, the 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 national anthem. I don't know if anybody ever read the real the original context of the national anthem written by Francis Scott Keyes, right? And he wrote this uh, really damning part of the national anthem that was taken out. He said, "Now the slave and the uh, vermin will have no no rest or refuge." You know what that means? That means that basically the, the uh, uh, what they were talking about was. When the British came, the slaves uprising sided with the British, and uh, and uh, and they crushed the slave uprising and stopped the British, and they defeated the British in in, uh, in the war. Of, uh, I think it was the War of 1812, right? And they said, uh, "No rest, no refuge." So, in other words, the black man in America will always be hunted. It ain't like the Indians. At least the Indians had land. They had a base. They had a, uh, a, a territory that they controlled. Black people never, no, never support as much as had a fort. You, you never, if you never even had a fort where you had stockpiled weapons, you know what I'm saying? Where you had warehouses, where you had grain, where you could, you could wait out a war. You know what I'm saying? If you never had ships or whatever aiding you on the soil and everything, they had complete control of the infrastructure of America. And so these fools who think they're gonna basically have, uh, 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 uh they're gonna fight it right here. We're gonna rise up in America. We're gonna take this shit over right now. We're gonna come up. Yo, you on the stairs, collar man. He'll say, This is our this is our land. We're gonna, we're, gonna take, we're gonna take this land over with that. That is those are Negro stalling tactics. It's been 400 years, and these Negroes haven't got a crumb. You know what I'm saying? They haven't got a morsel. They haven't got anything to show for it. You know what I'm saying? You gonna rise up and whatnot. You know, they come on. You know, Negroes, y'all, 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 y'all got to stop. Stop. Hold his all. <laughs> And I hope and hope was like, yo, again, you, you sign up for this. And hey, that was so poignant. Hold fast, man. Hold up. I gotta give it to you, man. I'm slipping nowadays, man. I thought I had those quick quirks. He you know, he's like, do you sign up for uh the, the uh what you call it? You didn't ask for ask for any questions on that. No, people sign up on Instagram, they sign up for they say they even ask you, would we like to uh have your contacts and everything? Like, yes, take all my contacts, you know, line up all my contacts. You don't even question it. You know what I'm saying? BAO. And also, the people that join the BAO, what we need, I need for people to do is, you know, look, we are friggin' growing. Like, I want to thank everybody for joining the BAO. The contributions are good and everything, but we have to do more, folks. Your pages in the BAO, we need to see more. We need some pictures. We need some bios. We want to know more about you. You know what I'm saying? Tell us what you do. Tell us what you do. Connect with the people in your local area. You know what I'm saying? Tell say look, you know, the meet and greet and stuff like that, you know, uh uh uh, uh science. Start a uh, uh, a debate a debate in your area about STEM, everything STEM and building. Once you enter the world of STEM and science and how things are built, smart city technology and everything, once you enter this world, you have no idea. People don't understand you can you can start an apprenticeship. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these companies are looking for apprentice, you know, say you don't have to have any technical. You can just have just enough enthusiasm about something where you can say, you know, I would like to be an apprentice. Take you as an apprentice. You know, take you as an apprentice. Maybe you won't get paid or whatever like that at first. But who knows? You know what I'm saying? You don't know what it can lead to. But the bottom line is this. And the more that people that we have in science and they start to see BAO members showing up at different science events and different business events and stuff like that. Who are these people? You know, that's Black African Infrastructure Organization. Where are they? Well, we're not much, but the bottom line is we have enthusiasm. That enthusiasm is going to go 10 times further than 
some stuffy person with uh, I graduated from Howard University. I'm telling me, rah, 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 rah. and you're not enthusiastic about anything. We're enthusiastic about building a better world. It was enthusiasm that led me to the uh, Charlotte Institute as a young as a young man in my 20s. You know, I learned things about science, how uh, how how economies work, how nations are built. You know, about infrastructure and all that. And I never thought in a million years I would have uh, uh, be part of something like this. You know, I just thought that was just over the head of most black people, and I was like, I don't know how this. So they, they then you know, this funny thing about uh, uh, blog talk radio, the people, the type of people you meet and come in contact with is amazing. I it's like finding needle hate. I never thought I'd meet somebody like my brother African World or X or my brother Thomas. I never thought I'd meet these brothers. I'm like, wow, man, you guys talk about this stuff too. And I thought people like this who talk about this usually called nerds and weirdos in our community. You know, yeah, you know, uh, we talk about this. We talk about science. We talked about, you know, African World X. He tried to throw some stuff at me one time, man. He said, you know, man, Colin, what's the, uh, it, uh, he, tried, he tried to throw some stuff at me, right? He tried to throw some stuff at me. I said, he goes, what's the, uh, 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 he talk about common denominator as far as like, uh, um, uh, 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 stuff that we need. And I said, well, first of all, the most common denominator of anything, those button, uh, uh, resources in the world has to be H2O. He's like, get the hell, how'd you know that? I said, look, uh, first of all, when you have land, right? You need land, that's the first thing, land, right? But before you could basically uh, uh, process any mineral, the one common the thing that, the thing, the thing that's most valuable is, that can be monetized is, is the thing that's most valuable and need, right? You have to develop water, and I, and I told him we'll talk about water potential in Africa. I said the African water potential, the potential for water, the billions of tons of water underneath African deserts, the billions of tons of water in the Sahara Desert Table, the billions of tons of water flowing through all the major rivers in Africa and everything, is enough water to develop hydro, so much hydro energy, so, many, so much energy for storage, drinking water, everything, that Africa would probably be a net exporter of water if that industry was ever developed you know i said i said water right i mean if he's building like water why because no industry can survive water is more precious than oil you know what i'm saying water is more valuable than oil but it's not developed and the reason why africa is suffering right now is because they, uh, most african countries do not have proper developed infrastructure you know you can have land but if your infrastructure is not developed right to serve. And people always say and those are uh and I appreciate my brother African Synergy who was uh who was uh listening to the show the other night well, hold up he even asked a question in the chat room and I'm gonna answer this right he said well, okay uh, uh 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 you can get land in uh in, in the United States and I said well and the question I want to ask is this I listened to the show afterwards so I, I couldn't comment you cannot get land in, uh you can have land but if you cannot build infrastructure now the whole thing is this if you have land, right? Infrastructure means you have a geopolitical power over that land. Let me, let me, let's write this down, folks, right? Land is nothing if you don't have, this goes back to people who need stairs to this African country, this African country. Are we going to have geopolitical, a political power over the land? Is that land going to be recognized as a African American, African national state? If that land is recognized, then you can proceed to build infrastructure. Why? Because you can have a government. A government is the one that's going to proceed and facilitate and protect and build that infrastructure. That means forming your own government. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's a commonwealth or a republic, a micronation, whatever it is, as long as it has, that government has recognition by whatever territory you're surrounding, nobody contested. Contested means what? Will somebody, if you start building infrastructure, will somebody send in tanks to take it over? If if it's all go, a country says, I don't care, you guys are recognized authority over that territory, right? Once you are recognized that target territory, you raise your flag. That flag is raised over that territory. Then you go look for countries and you get loans and business agreements and everything like that. Then the ball starts rolling into building whichever you want to build on. That You cannot build infrastructure until you have either sovereignty, complete sovereignty, or autonomy. You are never going to get, if you have a study in American history, you are not going to build no anything sovereign on a U.S. soil. You know what I'm saying? So this idea that, oh, yeah, we're going to have a nation with 
please, brothers, stop and cut that out. This takes actual work. Talk about building a nation state on the African continent actually takes work. And the BAO people, the BAO are the ones capable of doing it. Why? Because we have people joining the uh, group saying, yes, it, it's capable. We can do it. You know, I don't have anybody coming in saying we can't do it. We have brothers in Kenya and everybody. We're ready. You know what I'm saying? We have brothers on the ground on the continent. We're ready. We just need more support. More people come in, more come in, the fire starting to kindle, and it's going to viral and viral out of control to the point we can't handle it. We can't stop it. That's what we want. We want this to be so viral. It's a viral effect. Viral means when something is spiral. When something is viral and it spirals, it spirals out of control. When it spirals out of control, we cannot control it. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be everywhere. That's like brothers over in Kenya, brothers in Senegal. Just that you know, the idea that we should have land and touch on the continent. I mean, yes, we want that initial, that one nation state, but we also want settlements and build businesses and land and build communities in every African country. We want to be in Rwanda. We want to have business with, say, uh, say Kala. Uh, this is another thing. Another thing I want to address. I have I have no problem with African Americans going to Africa, but I don't think African Americans going to Africa should be able to should uh, uh, have their own land. They shouldn't be with each other. They should only go there just to help uh, the other country out. I'm like, wait a minute here. So in other words, basically, we should have nothing to ourselves. What is it about dynasty? What is it about African Americans? Nobody wants to see us together. So, you know what I'm saying? What, the, the, it sounds like it's not. It, I mean, like a, 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 a I mean, you said you said you said it earlier. It's, uh, it's the struggle uh, fetish. <laughs> so, in other words, basically, let me ask you a question. If we go to Ghana, Ghana. like uh, remember, uh, you have to it checks out. We are they're like Benin. Somebody put it to me years ago, right? I had somebody from this girl this lady came back from Benin. So my all the land off, then the government of Benin shut that down, right? You know, I don't know if you remember that situation. Anyway, she came and she was on my show. And she was like, well, the government of Benin's offering land to African as, as an apology, right? I said, what area? She, oh, no, no, no. You can't be together. It's like, it'll be all, each one of you have a, each person will have a, a piece of land all throughout the country, but you can't be in one particular area. I'm like, well, that, thanks for no thanks, but that defeats the purpose. You know what I'm saying? So I said, uh, there's no inhabitable land that's not associated with another country. Who is this great uh, truth teacher? Another Negro stole him. There is land. When I already, we already got land look, uh, looked at. His government's telling me all the time, yeah, we got plenty of land. The only problem is we just don't, we, we have to have the political will and the numbers over here and the, to build it. There's, there's land. African governments will love to have us have a state on their soil because we'll bring them revenue. Don't give me that crap. Less than 10, 12 percent of the African continent is developed. You know what I'm saying? The de most densely populated country in Africa is Rwanda. The problem with Africa is they don't have enough people. The, the, the smaller the territory, the more population. You need a population density, you know what I'm saying, to build a city state or nation state. Most African countries, people are scattered, are squ uh, scattered in rural areas, and so it is. You got whole sections of Africa that don't have roads, don't have anything, completely unoccupied with people. So don't give me that crap. As somebody who studied this stuff, stuff for 20 something years, you're talking nonsense, uh, great truth and great lying teacher. You know, so don't give me that crap, you know. There's all uninhabitable. What do you mean uninhabitable land? Do you understand what we talked about? We're talking about science here. You could take go Dubai was uninhabited, but look at Dubai right now, it was desert. Hey, have you ever seen the pictures of Dubai, uh Dynas, before? It was a freaking desert. Now, I mean, you, you don't even have to go to Dubai. Look at Vegas. Vegas was a desert. What do you mean uninhabitable land? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? All these, all these, all these freaking, uh, all these ignorant people. Yeah, Fiacre was a was a disaster. That's that that situation will never happen again. And Cohen Davis, you uh, uh, you telling me that I that lady beat me in the debate the other night? What are you crazy? He's the only one that thinks that. Oh, she handled Colin. I handled what? What because she can yell at me and blah blah blah. Get out of here with that. You know, that had to address that. You know, so the guy was like, this idea is uh, it's uninhabitable land. That's, that, that shows you when people aren't educated. You know what I'm saying? When they don't know anything about anything, and they come on a platform like this and talk and try to talk, try to discourage people. That's the beauty about the BAIO. We know what we're talking about. We study land development. We study science. We study all the stuff. 
you know. So that's so so uh so this so this nonsense about oh blah blah blah. You know, you know. So this like I said, I'm so proud of the PAL and their supporters. You know, you guys are just so great. You know, so great. Uh, Dubai was a uh, nothing but an oasis desert, just nothing. You know, nothing. Look at all uh, the land reclamation in Echo Atlantic, uh, Nigeria. Right? They took a built a massive sea wall around Lagos, right? And then they took land reclaimed from the ocean and filled it filled it up, right? Now they got acres and acres of land that was once at the bottom of the sea as land that they're selling and building, putting buildings on. Don't give me an about it's uninhabitable. There's no such thing as <coughs> uninhabitable land. That's just freaking ignorance and stupidity. You know, so, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, wholesome. people are so miseducated. You have to be miseducated to make a statement like that. <laughs> yeah, people are freaking ignorant. Miseducated, people are just playing out ignorant, you know. The whole thing is, is black people have never, when I, when I study years ago, land, infrastructure, nationhood, not nations, but I didn't call it something else. The idea of land, is, that's, that, that's wholesome, uh, came together, that roots in the, all was talk. Oh, okay, God, 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 I was going to say, we have to, we have to close out soon too, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's wholesome. Listen to all the stuff and say, you know something, Kyle talks about land. He talks about infrastructure and everybody else talks about, we need a nation. The whole school to put it all together. Land is built in nature. That was his thing. I said, okay, yeah, I guess we did. That sounds good. Land is built in nature. That's what we talk about. You know, we put it all together. We talk about we need a land, right? But the, that land needs infrastructure, government, all the stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. And then that thing we call a nation, that we could be a people and everything like that would thrive, a civilization. You know, land infrastructure nationhood. That's what I was born. Well, I said, okay, sounds good. Land infrastructure nationhood. No, well, sounds good. Sounds good to me. But uh, but uh, yes. Uh, but uh, thanks for having me on the show and uh, this uh last show <laughs> about the black conservative uh thing. Uh, we talk close out on that black conservative. Uh, uh I want to talk about your sister and everything like that. But you know that goes to show. You. One one thing goes to show you is this. Uh, I'll have a long said. You may be good on Fox News. They give you. Two minute sound bites and everything like that, blah, blah, blah. But when you have to stay here and try to debate the college genesis for two hours, you better come with your A game. You know what I'm saying? Come with your A game. Because I, like I said, we are masters at freaking taking people apart. You know what I'm saying? Taking people apart. And if you don't know what you're talking about, if you're half stepping, we will make sure. Like Sam, man, I followed in. Sam, man, get him out of here. <laughs> anyway, please join the BAIO. Folks, you know, social network. It's not hard. We're not asking you for no money. It's not a Ponzi scheme. You know, say nobody's going to come in and uh, uh, take something from you. It's just an organization of like minded people who want the same thing. Land infrastructure, nature. We believe that once we can make uh, uh, strong, we have to already got the people on the ground. We just have to have, we have a desire. We have to create a demand. Once it creates a demand, once we create the demand, then the thing will spiral out of control. It's like uh, it'll be a pandemic. Once you have like millions of black people saying we want land infrastructure nation, just if you can say black lives matter, black lives matter, black lives matter, black lives matter, black lives, you can say all that all day. You can start saying it. Land infrastructure nation, land infrastructure nation, land infrastructure nation. Every time, land infrastructure nation. I would like some of y'all that will scream black lives matter and start saying land infrastructure nation. We want a nation of our own. Why? Because that will give us the foundation to basically uh, smooth sail. And say, look, we got a uh, black America is bursting at the seams. They want land infrastructure nation. And then that will create the political force and the geopolitical power in the halls of government to make this a smooth transition. You know what I'm saying? But if you sit there, I don't know. I just don't know. And now, you know, what is Master going to say about this and all this kind of nonsense and everything? The bottom line is that uh, we want land infrastructure nation. But again, Dinus, thanks for having me on. Thanks for all you did with the BAIO. You know what I'm saying? You've really been a blessing, brother. You, you muted. Yeah, I'm right here. Okay. Yeah, no, it's all good, brother. Thank you for uh, coming on like always. How can uh, how can everybody get in contact with you? All right. Uh, you got my novel? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's upstairs, man. It's upstairs. Oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Get my novel, Journey to the Promised Land. You'll love it. Journey to the Promised Land, Voyage of the Barkentar. 
You'll love it. You know, good reading. It'll inspire you. When you read that novel, you're like, oh, man, it was such a beautiful time. They sailed back to Liberia and built settlements, man. They freed themselves from America. I wish I could do the same thing. I had a girl said that uh, when she was talking about, they were talking about New Georgia. There was a settlement in, uh, uh, they were talking about some African-Americans who sailed from one ship to New Georgia. And I remember uh, this, on this day, Black History, I remember there was a whole bunch of people, <laughs> middle class black people, like, man, I wish I could have been on that ship, you know? <laughs> But anyway, anyway, so anyway, uh, 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 go to uh, uh, the Black African Infrastructure Organization. Join the Colin Nation group, folks, man. I don't nobody's joining my group. Everybody's joining uh, uh, Holmes and Haven and everything else. But no, ain't showing Colin Genesis no love, you know. Colin Nation uh, group inside the BAIO. You know, I'm there, folks, you know. Uh, so uh, uh, you can join us and uh, get in touch with the STEM people. Join your local state. Join your state. I want each state chapter to one day, uh, one day each state chapter is going to have an administrative building. It's going to have a STEM building. It's going to have all that stuff like that. We're building a global infrastructure. You know what I'm saying? It all takes us. You know, we have nothing else to do. You know what I'm saying? We take the next 20 years building this. We're not only will have a nation state of all, but we'll have thriving black communities in every state in America. You know what I'm saying? It all takes will and desire. You know what I'm saying? Don't let anybody sidetrack you. The BAIO is the answer. You know what I'm saying? Before you can ask uh, uh, how you can get my book, go to Amazon. Journey to the Promised Land is on Amazon. Uh, the Voyage of the Bark of the Zorro. You know what I'm saying? It's on Amazon. The all BAIO right, cool. is the answer, you know? Cool, everyone. But hey, everyone, thank you so much for joining. Oh, we got a troll. Somebody says, uh, I, I do Ah, uh, whatever. Forget, forget the troll. Whatever. But everybody, um, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you go to search for Huru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, go to Africa Personified on those same platforms. Uh, make sure you go to Africa Personified on Africa. Search for Huru dot com, Also, go to um, make sure you go go to the B A B A I O as well. Go to the name site as well. Until next time, family and all the trolls. Peace. Peace, brother.